Forget lithium ion batteries. This is the future is a headline I've seen far too often, but this one's actually kind of interesting. There's a new zinc ion battery that's about to take the world by storm, charging up to 200 times faster, holding twice as much charge and lasting a hundred times longer. And apparently that ain't the half of it. So let's break this down, do a little bit of research and figure out if this new zinc ion vanadium oxide battery is all it's cracked up to be or just another big hype machine. I'm Ricky and this is 2 Vinci. This video is sponsored by Lark. I recently signed up for a very prestigious scientific research magazine to get the scoop on future video ideas when I came across this headline. Ultra high rate and ultra long life aqueous batteries enabled by special pair dancing proton transfer. And I knew I had to make a video about it. I mean, it's not very common that you see such a clickbaity title on a serious scientific publication. Between dancing pairs and ultra long life, it was definitely worth checking out. The paper is from a team of researchers from the Beijing National Laboratories for Molecular Sciences, and it describes an amazing breakthrough in zinc ion battery technology that fixes most, but not all, of the issues that these batteries have faced in the past. The new battery cell outperforms lithium ion in nearly every metric that matters, both in terms of mobile and stationary applications. And the best part is that they could reach commercial scale in the short term, so it's not some wild goose chase that we'll never see in production. So stick with us to the end to figure out exactly why. Let's start with a rundown of how zinc ion batteries work. Batteries with zinc electrodes have been around for decades, but the zinc ion battery, which is what this is about, was invented only 12 years ago. A zinc ion battery is a type of rechargeable battery that works just like a lithium ion battery, only using zinc ions as the charge carriers instead of lithium. The battery has three main parts, a zinc metal anode, a cathode made of a material that can store and release zinc ions, and an electrolyte that contains zinc ions. When the battery is charging, we use energy to force zinc ions from the anode to the cathode through the electrolyte. When the battery is discharging, zinc ions spontaneously move from the cathode to the anode through the electrolyte, generating an electric current to power your electronics, your home, or your EV. Although the original idea for zinc ion batteries was to serve for stationary, like home storage, the new breakthrough makes it a major contender for mobility that could challenge lithium ion. So let's compare how these two battery chemistries differ. Zinc has both pros and cons compared to lithium. For starters, zinc ions are a bit smaller than lithium ions, so you can pack more of them into the same space. Also, zinc ions have twice the charge of lithium ions, so they can store twice as much energy per ion. Overall, this translates to a higher energy density for zinc ion batteries compared to lithium, meaning we can make them smaller, but with the same charge level. But of course, there's always a trade-off. Zinc is almost seven times heavier than lithium. This means that, in theory, a cathode fully loaded with zinc will most likely be heavier than one loaded with lithium, even though you'll need only half the zinc ions for the same amount of charge. Because of these differences, zinc ion batteries have some key advantages over lithium, such as lower cost, higher safety, and more abundant materials. But they've also faced some major challenges, such as low energy density and dendrite formation on the zinc anode. There have been small improvements over the past five years, but the problem is that there simply hasn't been enough research and development around zinc ion as there has been for lithium ion. And this is why we haven't seen any zinc ion batteries hit the market just yet. But that is starting to change. And with this new breakthrough, we'll see a huge leap forward in zinc ion technology. I get to travel again, and it's so amazing, which reminds me of our sponsor this week, Lark and something I never leave home without. This is the Lark Swig Top Bottle. This gorgeous bottle comes in three beautiful colors in two sizes. I drink a lot of water, so I opted for the bigger size in Obsidian Black. Its wide mouth design makes it easy to throw in some ice and its double wall vacuum insulation keeps drinks cold for up to 24 hours. Its soft touch comfort grip handle makes it easy to carry and its leak proof magnetic cap keeps everything nice and tidy. But I just upgraded to the filtered straw for on the go water filtration. This is perfect for trips to remote places or the developing world. Just attach the right size straw for your size bottle found on the bottom. Next, the silicone adapter attaches to the mouthpiece, remove the filter plastic, attach the straw, and you have on-the-go filtration for things like chlorine, lead, PFAS, and other particulates. With a wide array of products from pure viz UV cleaning bottles and pitchers to filter bottles to the swig top bottle, there is truly a product for everyone. Drink brilliantly, ditch crappy, wasteful plastic bottles, and stay hydrated. Check out the Lark Swig Top bottle using my link, bylark.com slash 2bit3, and get a killer deal today. Huge thanks to Lark and you 
for supporting the show. So let's put on our engineering hats for a moment and talk about how this new breakthrough improved the zinc ion battery and what it means for you and me. I promise it'll be short. The new zinc ion battery's breakthrough comes from a new cathode material and the electrolyte used to make the battery. Most of the current zinc ion batteries use a manganese oxide cathode, but this one uses a special compound called sodium zinc vanadium oxide instead, or NZVO for short. This oxide makes a framework that can fit zinc ions and water molecules, which has a great advantage. We can make these batteries using water-based or aqueous electrolytes instead of the flammable organic electrolytes that make some lithium ion batteries dangerous or harmful. But there's more. Having water inside the cathode means that hydrogen ions or protons can move in and out as well. So protons can be co-inserted and deinserted during charging or discharging along with zinc ions. So why is this any good? Well, because protons are the most wiggly ions you can have in water. They move almost five times faster than the fastest metal ion you can think of. And this enables ultra high speed charging. But that alone didn't do the trick. The main breakthrough came from making the layers of anode material slightly more separated than normal to fit in even more water. So this is like opening several more lanes on a freeway. Before, a zinc ion would stand in the way of moving protons, like a truck in a one-way road holding a sports car back. But now protons can move around the cathode in all directions through a mechanism called 3D pair dancing, where protons and water molecules exchange partners. This is where the name from that article comes from. This completely changes the game when it comes to the conduction inside the electrolyte. You see, in a normal lithium ion battery, the lithium ions have to travel between the two electrodes and into the cathode. That's a long distance in atomic terms. But hydrogen ions and water don't need to do that because all water molecules have hydrogen. When a water molecule carrying a new hydrogen ion comes from the right, it hooks up with another water molecule forming a special pair like dance partners. Then a series of partner exchanges happen and ultimately releases a different hydrogen ion on the opposite end. Picture a line of dancers in pairs in a row and then a new dancer, a hydrogen ion, comes in from one side, steals the first partner, the lonely partner then steals a partner for the next one, and so on and so forth until the very end of the line. That dancer is an identical hydrogen ion to the first one that came in from the other side. So it's as if the first ion had teleported to the other side when in reality, it only moved over a few picometers. That's how this new zinc ion cathode enables extremely high charge and discharge rates. Exactly how fast is fast? And the answer is very very fast. The most impressive feat of the Zinc NVZO battery is its incredible power density. This new charging and discharging mechanism can charge and discharge the battery at up to 1000 Cs. Now, to realize how amazing that is, a battery C rate measures the speed at which a battery is fully charged from zero to 100% or fully discharged in one hour. This means that running at 1000 Cs, you can charge or discharge an NVZO battery in one 1000th of an hour or just 3.6 seconds flat. Lithium ion cells, on the other hand, can only charge or discharge at a maximum rate of around 5C. Any faster and the cathode breaks apart. So the fastest you can charge your EV with lithium ion batteries is around 12 minutes. With this battery, we could charge it in 3.6 seconds. So now you're probably thinking, okay, how many watts could that possibly pull? and how hot would it get? The fact is that this battery can handle charge rates 200 times higher than lithium ion batteries. At that charge rate, the cathode is showing a power density of around 500 kilowatts per kilogram. That's an order of magnitude higher than what some supercapacitors can manage and orders of magnitude higher than lithium ion batteries. The second biggest benefit and possibly the most important is cycle life. These batteries can last up to 200,000 cycles. 200,000. And this is not at optimal charge or discharge rates. We're talking like 500 C, which is 100 times faster than what any lithium ion battery can withstand. Let's put those 200,000 charge cycles into a little bit of context. Lithium ion battery cycle lives are all over the map, but an average cell phone battery working at around a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts will typically last 500 cycles or about two to three years. Tesla's EV battery packs are designed to last around 1500 cycles with better thermal management and charge control. So about 30 years doing full charge and discharges once a week, but they can go all the way up to 4,000 cycles under ideal optimal conditions. Again, the factors that go into battery health are state of charge, state of discharge, charge speed, and all that kind of stuff, thermal conditions and management. But generally speaking, 4,000 cycles isn't crazy for a electric vehicle. Now this would mean that the zinc 
NZVO battery can last 50 times as many cycles, and we can add double the capacity. I'll get to that in a minute. That's 100 times longer than the best lithium ion batteries under milder optimal conditions. Then we have energy density, which is usually a typical zinc ion battery's shortfall compared to lithium, but not this one. The best lithium ion battery today made by Amperis Tech has a record 500 watt hours per kilogram of specific energy density. The new Zinc NVZO battery can reach specific capacities of 436 milliamp hours per gram, almost three times higher when charged slowly at 0.5 Cs. But because they only operate between 1 and 1.8 volts, this isn't a threefold increase in terms of energy density. But it does put the new battery anywhere between 436 watt hours per kilogram to 785 watt hours per kilogram. This makes it at least in the realm of the best lithium ion batteries today. But there's still a lot of questions about thermal management, BMSs, and how these would be built up into packs. So the pack voltage and the pack energy density is probably still a bit of a question mark. Then there's safety. Aqueous batteries are inherently safer than lithium ion and other batteries that use organic electrolytes because all organic solvents are flammable and represent a fire hazard. We've all seen videos of scooters, cell phones, and EVs catching fire while charging. This actually couldn't happen to a zinc ion battery. But as we evolve into a more electrified society, other factors are also really important, like how available these materials are. Unlike lithium ion, zinc ion cells don't require mining lithium, cobalt, or manganese. They only need zinc, which is orders of magnitudes more abundant than lithium, and vanadium, which is at least 10 times more abundant than cobalt. These raw materials should also be easier to source. Take a look at this table. The world's biggest zinc reserves are in Australia, but you could also source it from Mexico or Brazil or even mine it here in the US. And while the largest reserves of vanadium are in China and Russia, that could be potentially a problem. We could also source it from South Africa or Australia. So at least from a broad perspective, we could meet the supply chain side of large scale production with a couple of strategic alliances. Zinc batteries could potentially also be cheaper. They're even compatible with the same standard manufacturing processes for lithium ion batteries. So if say Tesla or another battery manufacturer wanted to switch to zinc ion, they could do it with possibly minimal capital investment. So things are looking up for the Zinc NZVO battery, but this is Tuba Da Vinci, an engineering channel, and there's always trade-offs, and this is no exception. Let's look at some of the cons of the Zinc NZVO battery. For all the research papers shine and luster, we should always keep our feet on the ground and remember that these are only lab results. This is a new technology we haven't seen in the field and there's no way of knowing just how well it'll scale up in terms of production and performance. The second drawback is a low operating voltage. Aqueous zinc ion batteries can only work between one and 1.8 volts per cell, which is far lower than the three to 4.2 volts that a lithium ion battery achieves. This is because of the water-based electrolyte. You can't put too much voltage in a water-based electrolyte because you'll end up electrolyzing the water producing parasitic hydrogen gas. This gas can build up and make the battery go boom or escape and reduce the battery's energy efficiency. So if you need more voltage, you need to stack up more than twice as many cells in series than you would a lithium ion battery, which means more BMSs, more charge control management, and a lot more complexity from a pack perspective. Another common issue with zinc ion batteries is that the anode, which is made of zinc metal, has a tendency to form dendrites. These are little spikes of metallic zinc that grow like hairs from the surface that can potentially shortcut the battery, reducing cycle life. Although some practical solutions for this have been proposed, it's not clear if they'll work with the NZVO battery. Finally, Professor Linda Nazar from the University of Waterloo studies zinc ion batteries and points out that high cycle rates like the ones we talked about here aren't really necessary for most applications. She also noted that at lower charging rates, several unwanted side reactions occur that can degrade the battery's capacity. So in reality, it probably won't reach those 200,000 cycles. So you can't charge it too fast or you'll lose energy density. You can't charge it too slow or you might have too many side reactions. That's a bit of a conundrum and there might be an optimization solution there, but it is going to be a challenge and require a lot of research. But there is a bright side. Some companies are already producing zinc ion batteries that are challenging other battery chemistries for stationary home storage. For example, Salient Energy has been working on a zinc ion manganese battery and already has a working prototype. The company successfully completed safety testing for the commercial battery, which is almost ready to hit the shelves. 
The rated capacity of a cell is 60 amp hours with a nominal voltage of 1.3 volts and a weight of 1.3 kilograms and the following dimensions. This all works out to a specific energy density of 60 watt hours per kilogram. Not very impressive. And a volumetric energy density of 100 watt hours per liter. This isn't impressive either. While this might not be a good fit for electric vehicles or smartphones, but would it really matter that much if it weighed more or took up more volume for grid storage or your home? Probably not. Salium's battery is set to cost about 30% less than the equivalent lithium ion battery. It's also safer and theoretically longer lasting. So it should be better for the environment as well. Horton World Solutions, an American sustainable home builder, is installing these batteries in 200,000 homes in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, as well as across the Sun Belt. Urban Electric Power sells a zinc manganese battery that the San Diego Supercomputer Center, SDSC, which hosts the research computing loads for the University of California, San Diego, used to replace its one megawatt lead acid system. Zinc Air Battery Storage Company, EOS Energy Enterprise, secured a US $200 million investment commitment to commercialize and scale up production. And another company, eZinc, raised $25 million in a Series A at the start of April 2022. So there's clearly a buzz in the industry for zinc batteries. Once startups catch wind of the new zinc NZVO technology, it won't be long before we see that challenge lithium on for the battery crown. But obviously, there is a ton of questions and this is early research. The key is going to be balancing charge rate for one between not too slow as to have side reactions and not too fast as to lose energy density and two dendrite formation which has always plagued zinc batteries in the past. So how they get around these things will be the key and again you have to be able to build them at scale on a conveyor belt battery after battery reliably and that might still be three or five years away. But there is a ton of research happening and I just love when we use new chemistries to build batteries because if you put all the strain on lithium alone, we're gonna have some problems eventually. All right, so what do you think? Do you think zinc is the future? Sodium, perhaps? We've done a video on that or some other chemistry altogether. Sound off in the comments below and while you're down there, hit that subscribe button and the like button if you thought this was interesting. All right, until next week, I'm Rick with Tuba Da Vinci. Thanks so much for watching. Check out this video next.